Hey everyone, Kodith here, and today I'd like to share my general thoughts and outlook for the Season 5 PTR, and what I'd like to see going forward. So, first off, we have a new endgame activity. It's called the Infernal Hordes. You access it with these compasses here. They act just like the uh, Nightmare Sigils, essentially. You would activate one, and you can teleport right into it. But yeah, it takes up space in your consumable tabs, so I would like to see maybe a change here. This does take up a lot of space, but let's go over like the activity itself. So the activity is like a survival-based uh, minigame in a way. Um, you defeat waves of enemies. You want to prioritize getting Aether, because Aether is what you use to unlock rewards at the very end. So between waves, you can choose different upgrades that come with their ne negative... Um, downsides as well so for example you'd have an upgrade that gives you bonus aether but the elite monsters that you face do increased damage so stuff similar to that i would like to see that improved upon like maybe add some more um gameplay diversity there there's definitely room for improvement for sure um so after you like face the waves you finished all of that, you got your Aether, you go into a final room, final boss chamber, where you encounter three bosses. So these three bosses are from Diablo 2, Act 3 actually, they're, they're the High Council. So there's a set of five of them, and out of five, you'll face three of them at random. So it's a pretty cool fight, I enjoyed the boss fights. Um, the rewards, so you have an option, or you have multiple options. You can choose, there's a chest for equipment, there's a chest for um, greater equipment, which is going to be a guaranteed greater affix. And there's uh, materials. And lastly, there's one you could just dump the rest of your Aether into gold. What I was doing, I was just purchasing the regular equipment chest, because those are just 25 Aether. I really didn't get that much from it. It didn't seem worth it to me, honestly. Um, the greater equipment one, it would cost 250 Aether. I never really got close to that in my time playing. Materials... I did that a couple times, did not really seem worth it. I didn't even really recall what I got, aside from like gem fragments and stuff. So I wasn't like too crazy about that. And then the gold, uh, gold could probably have been tuned a little bit better. Um, maybe something they could do is have the Aether that you earn carry over, potentially. But I would definitely like to see some uh, change with the rewards. It really didn't seem worth it for the amount of time. Like I was thinking maybe it could be good for leveling since you unlock it in world tier 3 but your options are going to be still like nightmare dungeons as well so you're going to need to level glyphs anyway so you still might be more apt to do uh, nightmare dungeons so um you also yeah you have uh, eight different tiers here as well these are tier threes you can upgrade them as well with these scrolls you get the scrolls from salvaging them so if you have extra you just salvage them turn into scrolls but um, that's it for the uh, new endgame activity. I really enjoyed it. Like, overall, I had fun. I see a lot of potential there. I would definitely like to see it improved upon, though. Uh, let's go over skill changes. So for skill changes, something that I really enjoyed this season, or this PTR, uh, Flurry. Now we have, like, a teleport with the Flurry, which is really cool. I've been having a lot of fun with Rogue. So we've got, like, extra mobility with Flurry now. Yeah, Casting Flurry dashes you to a target and heals 10% of your maximum life. So this has been like a really fun build. It is, there's kind of like a bug, or probably not a bug, maybe it's not intended right now, but exploit weakness is kind of crazy, so people have been pushing like tier 200 pit with this because it executes monsters, essentially. Yeah, it's kind of crazy right now. <laughs> but uh, Bash, I did play a little bit of a Bash Barb. Uh, they did Bash the... They did nerf the bash tempers, but with the new uniques that they introduced, there's the uh, the sword and the helmet. Bash still feels pretty good with those. You just have to work on like managing your resources with that. Uh, Sorcerer, I played Chain Lightning Sorcerer and a little bit of Frozen Orb. I still feel like Sorcerer needs some love. Yeah, I saw some nerfs. I didn't understand the nerfs t too much, but yeah, I would like to see Sorcerer get some love. Much need in love, or else I'm probably not going to play Sorcerer next season. This is coming from a Sorcerer main, too. Um, but yeah, st still my favorite class, though. Um, okay, let's go over the quality of life stuff. So quality of life, they added it so you can resummon bosses. So, for example, you're doing Grig. After you kill Grig like normal Grig, 
the podium will pop up right away again. And you could just like toss in your mats. You don't have to exit the dungeon and reset. You could just stand right there in the boss room and keep chain summoning him over and over. This is a great change. I really enjoyed that. It made farming um, or getting rid of materials like a lot easier. Like the living steel. Like I had so much living steel to use. Uh, Beast in the Ice is getting changed. It wasn't in the PTR. But Beast in the Ice is getting changed from a Nightmare Dungeon to a regular dungeon. This is a great change. They're also making it like a shorter dungeon to match like the other bosses. So it won't be limited on uh, deaths, for example. If you're going in a full group, and you only have like um, four deaths to use up. Uh, Varshan's also getting changed. You're not going to be required to use these other mats, like the hand, the head, and the femur. It'll only be Malignant Hearts. Uh, I'm not sure if this is going to be, like, still used or still um, implemented the way they're planning to. But it's going to be one malignant heart to summon him. I feel like that might be kind of low relative to the other bosses. I could see, like, maybe four or five to, like, maybe match the living steel. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, that change wasn't in the PTR as well. So we didn't really get to try that out. Uh, something else that they changed. Mythics. So these are now called Mythics. They have a unique look to them. They got this purple look. You drop them. Looks really cool. And that's different compared to like regular Uniques. Yeah, a lot easier to tell the difference between these two now. So you won't accidentally salvage them. Like I know some people have. So that's a cool change as well. Uh, target farming Uniques. So you can target farm Uniques from Obols, like gambling. You can target farm them from hell tight chests. Say you wanted a helmet, for example, you can go for the protection chest with helmets in hell tide, or um, whisper caches. When you turn those in, you'd be able to target farm those with helmets. So those are really cool. I didn't get any uniques from doing that myself in the PTR, but um, some others have. So that's cool. Great quality of life change there. Uh, something with hell tide. Hell tide could use like another profaned mine cage this season. So it felt kind of like, I don't know, it was lacking something with the Helltide. It was lacking challenge, I guess. So I would like to see like another Profane Mind Cage kind of thing where you increase monster levels and get the increased Cinder drop rate. Uh, Baneful Hearts, the drop rate did get decreased, but I couldn't really notice it that much because our characters got transferred over, so we already had like 100 plus Baneful Hearts. I think during my time in the PTR, I maybe got like three Baneful Hearts to drop. So it's going to be a lot different next season. There probably won't be too many people chain summoning the bosses. But um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. And it's also, they change it so it's a bit easier to get whispered, Whispers done in Helltide. Um, turning those Grim Favors and stuff. I did a little bit of it, didn't notice it too much. But it is there. Uh, the new uniques, uh, they added like a bunch of new uniques, class specific ones too. The ones I did get to try out were pretty fun, especially the um, the basic attack ones and the resource ones. Those are pretty cool. I enjoyed those. They might need to get like fine tuned. The sorcerer pants could definitely be improved upon, like the chain lightning ones. Uh, also, they changed the uh, the weapon types that some classes can use. So druids, for example, you can use pole arms. Sorcerer, you can use maces, you can use swords, so like a Zurath Doombringer. I really like that change. That was really cool. They changed some of the implicit stats on some of the um, the items. Like um, bows, for example. Instead of doing dist damage to distant, they do crit damage now. So that's a cool change. The only one I didn't really like was the offhands. So offhands are going from... Uh, what was it? Cooldown reduction to lucky hit chance I wasn't really a fan of that to be honest but overall good changes and there's a um, also there's a new in-game guide here if you want to check this out this is good for like new players it, like goes over the basics here paragon different like class stuff um, blacksmith gambler so it's cool that we have like an in-game guide that we can refer to, especially for like new players just coming into the game. They might feel like overwhelmed at first, so nice handy little guide for new players. It's cool. Uh, there's also, let's go to the game options here, some stuff to show you guys. So gameplay, 
so we have new combat text options so you can still like show or um, disable combat text you can check off these different boxes here so if you don't want to show normal damage just want to show crit you can do that yeah so it's super helpful if you want to like analyze just the crit damage or something like that right you want to just like single out a certain damage type really cool for that uh, also there's like small other changes here you can display your own resources and health like above you right here so it might be helpful for like accessibility for some people don't want to look over here want to look at your character just look at that pretty nice change uh, what else go to gameplay here so there's also I don't have anyone in my party right now but these paths here when you're in a party, they're color-coded, and you can see your other party members' paths as well. You can see what they're pinned to. Well, that was a pretty cool change. Something as well with the paths, like going on from that. We've got a compass now. So this is another accessibility feature that was pretty cool. So when you have a pin, you'll have this compass here. See, it's kind of like pointing to the direction to go. This will be helpful for some players, definitely, for accessibility reasons. Yeah, really cool features they're adding for accessibility. Um, let's go over to gameplay. Yeah, take that off. And some like auto navigation assistance too. So like vo um, voice assistance. And yeah, that is mostly it that I wanted to go through and like in general. I'm looking forward to uh, future PTRs. I would like to see us get like the tempers, aspects, unique items, and like masterworking materials like just given to us at the start because this PTR is only lasting for a week. And I know me, like I don't have a lot of time because I also have like a full time job. So in order to like get one character up and running like slightly, I got to farm for like a few hours just to like get the beard build like semi working essentially. I had to farm aspects, I had to farm tempers. I still did not get tempers for my um, my rings here. I still did not get those. Uh, the unique items as well. Uh, yesterday I spent maybe three or four hours just farming for two specific uniques that I wanted to try out. So going forward, I would like to see us get those at the beginning just so we can actually like fully test builds and stuff. I didn't go into the pit either because I did just did not have the time. Yeah, life time constraints and PTR time constraints did not have the time to like masterwork stuff so I'm sure other um, casual players are experiencing the same thing I'd probably put myself between casual and hardcore somewhere in the middle there but yeah even then I just don't have the time but um, with that being said I'm still excited for season 5 I like the new endgame activity looking forward to the new changes I see a lot of potential with the new endgame activity and yeah let me know you guys' thoughts in um, comments down below don't forget to like and subscribe take care peace